Welcome to the Pool Nation podcast, where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. We talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. Now let's welcome your host with over a decade of industry insider experience and still the reigning champion of Marco Polo, Edgar De Jesus, and his co-host, John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and Zach the Pool Boy Nicholas. Welcome, everyone, to the Pool Nation Live podcast with myself, your host, Edgar De Jesus. And yes, I am the reigning champion of Marco Polo, along with John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and the famous Zach, the pool boy, Nicholas. Today, we're talking to Eric Nelson and Stan Basowski from the Western Pool and Spa Show in Long Beach, California, and that'll take place on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. We will do a deep dive into the show, classes and events taking place at the show. For more information on the show, you can go to www.westernshow.com or poolnation.com. I want to welcome everyone to our live podcast, the podcast where it's all pool talk. We ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. And we will talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. But before we get started today, I want to thank our sponsors for this podcast, the Ultimate Pool Tools, the SPPA, Pool Invoice, and Blu-ray Excel. We want to thank them for their continued support. John, good morning. Well, good evening. Good morning. Good evening. Right. <laughs> uh, well, see, the thing is, is that nobody's really going to know that we're doing this at, at night, right? It's like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock your time, and almost 7.30 our time. But it is... A beautiful evening. We just were kind of riding on a little bit of a high. We just got back from training. We went to the Pentair training out in Temecula over at Pechanga Resort and had a great time. It was good to be back in action and seeing people and seeing faces again and getting to hopefully kind of getting back into the norm, right? The last training I went to for Pentair was, I think, in Vegas, and I think it was like 2018 or something like that and wow yeah it was a long time and mama she's evolved a lot since then so now that she's servicing pools and she's been doing it now for almost three years she's you know she's gotten from that infancy stage where she really didn't understand pools and she was really intimidated she never went to any of the trade shows and none of the trainings made any sense to where now you know she's walking in there with their you know, ask her confidence, questions. right? Yeah, confidence. <laughs> she understands, right? She wants, she's hungry. She wants to learn. She, I cannot tell you how excited she is to go to the Western show. We were there going to see Bob at the PCTI training that he was doing there in person when the show got canceled in 2019 or 2020. I can't remember. It's all a blur. And she was, she was just absolutely devastated that she wasn't able to go to the show. And she's been chomping at the bit and looking forward to getting to go to the Western because, you know, I talk nothing but great things about it because I truly love that show. And we're just excited. And I think it's a, like a good little segue that we just got off training. And, you know, this is the season of shows and training for us in this area. And we're looking forward to going to the Western in a couple weeks. So I appreciate you guys jumping on and talking with us knuckleheads. And that's about it. Eric, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm assuming that those days are really, really long right now as you're getting close. Really, really long. Yep. There's a lot to do, a lot to put on. Yeah. It's a big effort. Absolutely. Great. We'll get into some of the details of that. Stan, good evening. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. How about yourself? Well, can't complain. We're doing our podcast here with you guys. I'm getting really excited because the show is, what, two weeks away? And my countdown has begun. So... It's kind of neat because people were calling me going, hey, let's set up a call. I'm like, nope, can't be out at the Western all that week. I'll call you the week <laughs> after, you know. And as you guys know, that's the show that I grew up in. So this year was the first time that I've ever been to a different show. I'd never been to any show other than the Western in all these years for the pool industry. So, you wow. know, it's got a, a special place in my heart. And now that we're going back with the podcast and stuff like that, it just means even more. So I'm super, super excited. So 
All right, guys, before we get started today, there's a couple things that I want to talk about. One of them is if you guys have questions that you guys want answered on the podcast, you can go to poolnation.com. We added a big button up there. You can click on that button. You can submit the questions. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's water chemistry business, if you guys need repair questions, whatever it is, submit those there. We'll answer those on the line for you. The other thing that I want to talk about, which obviously is today's podcast, is I want to talk about the Western Pool and Spa Show in Long Beach. And it's going to be on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. For more information, you can go to thewesternshow.com or you could go to poolnation.com. And there's a big button there. You can click on that. John and I are going to be there. We're going to be teaching four classes. Our classes are adding value to your business with branding and understanding business metrics, financials, and your cost of service. The other big thing that I'm excited about, guys, is that you guys are going to do a $20,000 cash prize this year. So here at the podcast, we have something going on. So Stan, I think I'm going to sign you up. And that is that we're putting the word out that whoever wins the 20,000, if they're a Pool Nation follower, they need to take us to Vegas that weekend. So that right there after the show on Saturday, we just hop in a plane and head to Vegas for the weekend. I hope uh, that so, works for you guys. Right? <laughs> so, Wishful thinking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, Stan, we've had some listeners email and go, hey, we're coming down from Vegas to the show. If I win, I'm taking you guys. And I'm like, oh, well, so you don't have to tell us twice. We'll get on and go. So anyways, we're hoping to meet a lot of you guys out there. So make sure that you guys come by the booth, check us out, send us a message, and we will connect. The other thing that I want to talk about is a peer-to-peer meeting. For those of you that are interested in joining our peer-to-peer meeting, you can go to poolnation.com. You can register there. And we meet the first Sunday of every month. And what we do is we talk about your business. So any business questions that you guys have, you guys can bring them there. We kind of go through those. So anyways, super excited to have you guys on. Eric. Stan, super excited. Let's jump into this podcast. And uh, I'm going to start with you, Eric. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Well, I guess we're talking about pool industry. I've been literally doing things in the pool since I was seven or eight years old. I think I was seven years old. My dad was an engineer doing stuff in the Apollo program. And he got asked by a guy who's a dentist here in the area of Sherman Oaks to do this design work on the original Polaris. And I think he got paid 500 bucks. So my first job was sitting on a diving board at seven years old and plotting where the cleaner went back and forth and back and forth on a piece of paper. And I got paid 25 cents an hour. And I thought I was the richest guy in the world. <laughs> so I was joking to tell them at fluid and whatever, you know, it's gone through everything. That I was your first employee. <laughs> you know? That's but fascinating. Uh, I actually started doing pools. I was about 14 in the mid early 70s. So I've been around for a long time. I mean, I saw when we were first getting over and from glass bottles to regular bottles and plastic stuff. And I worked the guy who had a route in Beverly Hills and really was something that I enjoyed and interesting. And ultimately started doing stuff when I was a teenager and got my own vehicle I could go around. And I would sit down at a market down in Beverly Hills and all the pool guys would go in there. And I, could always pick up pools. The guys would come in and they'd go, you'd be all ticked off at some customer. And they'd go, hey, kid, you want this pool? You know, and like, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and I do vacation routes and, you know, whatever I could. And in the meantime, I've done a gazillion other businesses. I've had a clothing company. I, I have had a truck rental business, a printing business. I've had ranch, I have a gravel pit, you know, raise cattle and alfalfa. And so all, all those things. I've always had other businesses and doing stuff, but that... But I've been in the, almost always have been in the pool industry. And probably one of the best things is that you can literally start with almost nothing and get out there pretty easily and make a decent living. It's one of the few businesses that are out there that you can do that with. Now, where predominantly is your your business? Is it still in Beverly Hills? Yep. Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Malibu, mostly all really high-end celebrities. I mean, I've signed... I don't know how many non-disclosure agreements are like that thick, you know, don't do from the Schwarzenegger to Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft. I mean, tons and tons of celebrities and stuff. And and I know Stan's done a bunch of the, the, those same kind of people too, but that's sort of my niche there. And mostly it's in that area, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Malibu. 
and I'm assuming that's all like high end service. You know, they want everything tip high top end, now. High end service, sometimes multiple pools, multiple spas in one property, multiple houses in a property. We have one property that has four houses, three pools, five spas, and a big, huge water features and stuff. So that's multiple thousands a month in service. Yeah. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of automation and multiple pumps. And then it's also high demand. They demand quality. They want everything perfect all the time. Yeah. Uh, and they so expect you there when it. they need you. And Oh, yeah. Whenever I'm doing a billing, I always call it like pain in the ass price. You know, so if I know this guy is going to be, a, you know, they're really going to be a... Love it. You know, add that to the price because I've been there. I've freaking been at Arnold's house at when it, we're not done to his pool anymore, but at midnight fixing the spa, literally. You know, so those are things that you just, that's what you do. You know, if you're going to provide that kind of service and they're expecting that, then you, you do that. And we'll come if they're having a party, you tell us and we'll, we'll be there and we'll make sure that everything is good before we'll make an extra trip. You just give us notice and stuff and we'll, we'll work it out. So, so it's that concierge sort of kind of service that you got to do. And that's what they demand, what they like. And that's also a, a big thing is always keeping a relationship, no matter if they're actors or super rich business people is I always try to have a personal relationship with the actual owner not just through the property manager and stuff because property managers they, they are probably the worst as far as that pain in the ass problem yeah oh yeah they get you so used to somebody I remember who is it Dustin Hoffman's whatever assistant want this or want that and he go well I, I call up a restaurant or I do whatever and they they do what you want and I go well you know we'll do stuff but you know we need to know it it is it's not just I mean, just because you're who you are yeah i liked know, rain man but not right not that much. <laughs> I mean, exactly i got a quick quick really funny story with him and i'll tell it quick but i was walking in the backyard once and he's about five foot two or three i mean he's super short right and i'm walking in his backyard we're looking at the property and i'm wearing a ball cap and and he's got trees and I walk in, I literally walk in and didn't look at him, kind of look at that and I walk right into this tree branch. It nails me right there. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like stunned and kind of like, and he looks up at me and he goes, gosh, that never happens to me. You know, <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you know, most of those, all those people are just real people. And they like to be treated like people. And if you don't, you know, fawn over them and do whatever and just honest to them, that's the biggest thing. You're just honest to people and tell them what they need and, and ask them what they want and try to figure it out and that things work out. I'm assuming because you've been doing Beverly Hills and all those people, then word kind of gets out between them, right? Because all those people talk. And so is that what happens? Is everybody just calls you? Oh, yeah. So literally to this day, I have never advertised. I have never had an ad, ad in the yellow page. I've never had an ad in a, anywhere. I've got a website, but I've never, never actually advertised. And my best for years, my best way of getting new referrals and new clients is from the maids of the people in the houses. People don't realize that in Beverly Hills, who runs all those houses is the maid. And there's usually, there's sometimes multiple maids and it's a head maid or that's there. And they all talk and they all know all the other maids in all the other houses and they hear and I'm good friends with them. I speak Spanish too. You know, we speak Spanish and whatever. And so I'm all speaking Spanish to them. And they will hear, oh, they need a, a pool guy. So they'll talk to the other maids in, in the other houses, you know, other rich people, whatever. And they, and then they go, hey, this guy's whatever. And all of a sudden I get a phone call, you know? So that, that is awesome. Yeah. It's all, there's different ways. I mean, different ways of getting clients and doing it. And then if you have a good rep reputation and talk to people, making friends and stuff with, with anybody, you don't realize who it is, where you can, where you're going to get that next client or how it's going to come about. But that really was for years. That's probably one of my best ways of getting new customers. That is amazing. That's awesome. John, I was over here thinking I've kind of done a couple houses that are pretty cool here and there, but Listening to that, I'm like, I think I would ride one day on a route like that. How cool would that be? Oh, it'd be, you know, they they, it, it would be they probably cool. won't let me in. It would be really cool, <laughs> uh, definitely. But I know how how demanding having accounts like that is. It is very, very demanding. And hats off to you for being able to do that and do it successfully. That's not an easy task. We're more of a concierge type service too, is what we offer here. We're much, much more expensive than the majority of the pool companies. And we cater to more of higher end clientele. And 
we have some celebrities that we take care of and nor near the caliber that you're talking about, but a lot of rich business men and women that have four or five homes, you know, and they have a $5 million fifth home out here. So, I mean, I get it and it's very taxing and demanding, but it's also very rewarding. So yeah, it's quite the task to do, but it is pretty fun seeing some of these systems. And Property, I know you're talking right. about like, comp- some systems we have too are like really, I mean, you get some complicated systems, especially in some of these bigger homes. And it's fun being able to walk back there and look at it and say, yeah, I can do this. I remember my first day, one of the first homes I got and they had two pumps and I didn't even know what the hell was going on. <laughs> oh my God, what am I going to do with two pumps? And now we have systems with like eight pumps, nine pumps that are running. And so it's pretty amazing. And it's quite a beautiful yeah. thing. We've got water features that are run up to 30 horse pumps. Oh, right. Holy cow. What For waterfalls that are pumps of water up over 110 feet, I think the one up to a giant water feature. That's next level, like next, next level. And I've had to replace cool. it a few times. Having to bring in a hoist and other stuff, yeah, or rebuild them. John, I've got to show you. Eric sent me, we were talking the other day, and he was talking about some of the older equipment and stuff like that. And obviously for everybody listening, you can't see the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it on our Instagram page so that you guys could check it out. But John, I'm going to show you really quick here. So that he shared this picture of this heater from the 1920s. Boiler. Check that out. Right. It's a pool heater. It's a pool heater. And then check this out after he refurbished it. Oh, that is so nice. Is it gorgeous or what? Wow. <laughs> so everybody listening to the podcast, go to our Instagram page at poolnationpodcast.com and we're going to post those I'll, babies I'll, there. I'll send you a little bit better picture. I think of wow. the final version. Here's the funny thing. So my wife is obviously, we talk pool all day. The wife obviously is like, uh, don't want to hear. And I showed her those pictures and she's like, I want that. I would find a place for it. And I'm like, yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> it's beautiful. Look at that, John. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. You got to send it to me. In the 1920s and stuff, that, that place we're taking out stuff, they had leather belt drive to drive the pump. That's just crazy. That's awesome. That you had to replace every week or yes. every other week? Well, <laughs> well that, that equipment had run for quite a while, but they were down, still down in the pits. So you never saw equipment. They were all, you had to crawl down open a big cover and crawl down inside. And, and sometimes they even had big, huge viewing windows where you looked into the pool from, from the pit, you could see that underwater into the pool. Uh, we had one that the Florsheim family had that was right on the beach, right next to, right near the Santa Monica pier that it was like that. And, and they'd have like a little light there. And that was the pool light, you know, shining it into the glass, into the, into the pool. That's fascinating. That's awesome. I'm over here sitting thinking, man, we got to do a podcast with you just to kind of go down memory lane because you got so much great info and stuff like that. We got to do a separate one just to yeah, fun. to talk about. That'd People be awesome. And, yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Stan, hello. How are you? Yes. <laughs> We've left That's Stan over there in right. the back corner, right? That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> right. No problem. So can you uh, take some time and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yes, mine is a little bit different than Eric's. I didn't start in the pool industry until later in life. I was a butcher for 30 years, and 20 of those years I was in management. And I used to take a day off during the week, and I would go to the local restaurant. And I met a lot of pool guys that were there, you know, having breakfast. And after a few months, I got to know him pretty well. And one of the guys, he says, you know, he said, Stanley, why don't you take on uh, 10 pools and try it out and see if you like it? So I thought, well, what the heck? I'll go ahead and try it. I sold my car. I bought a truck. I got my equipment. And I started doing pools. This was in uh, 1985. I went to school and I got my technician license. And I worked part-time until I uh, retired in uh, 2002. And then I took on extra pools. I I only worked four days a week. I mean, I wasn't working full-time. I only had like 40 accounts. After I retired from the meat business, I started working the show in 03. I had a friend that uh, was in the business, and he worked the show. And he says, why don't you come down and check it out? He says, uh, maybe you'll enjoy uh, working it and, and checking out you know, the different products and also the uh, seminars. So I said, sure, I'd be glad to. This was in 1903, and I'm still here. <laughs> so I got, this will be my 20th show at the Western Pool and Spa Show. 
That's crazy. So, uh, I started out working the first five years I did security in water fills. And I worked with a very dear friend of mine, Don Miley, who uh, retired from taking care of the volunteers. That was his job. And so I took that over for him. There wasn't too much uh, longer after that. Eric asked me to take over the seminars because the gal that was doing it, she, uh, she couldn't do it anymore. And so I took that on as well. I enjoy doing the show. It's for me, it's uh, I, I like t giving back to the show for what it did for me. I mean, it was really a pleasure being in the pool industry. And I really enjoyed it because I was in, indoors in the cold all the time. I have a great uh, bunch of volunteers that work at the show for us. And it's really, really a good, uh, good thing. Did you see that, John, how he got synced in? They're like, here, try out 10 pools. And he sold, he got the truck. And then next thing you know, he sucked into the business. <laughs> What's funny oh, is that story, that story is you hear it told many times, even nowadays when you ask people how they get started, especially, you know, the, the younger guys that are getting into it and the younger women, it all starts off like that. And yeah. it's, it's the beauty of this. I would have never thought in a million years that I would be doing pools. That was not even like even remotely on my radar. And here I am, right? And not only doing pools, but talking, doing podcasts, classes, doing what we need. Who would have ever thought? And it's I just, a, it, it's this industry is a beautiful thing. It really is. And it has a way of just grabbing you, right? And getting a hold of you. And uh, some, people you're say, in. Suck, some people call it sucking you in. <laughs> yeah, like Godfather, right? Just when I thought I was out, it pulled me I have to, in. That's kind of how it is. I have to tell you a little yeah. story. When sure. I started out and I was uh, uh, doing the pools on my day off, and naturally every day that I did it, I'd go to the restaurant in the morning and, and have uh, breakfast with the guys. One particular morning, we, we all left, and I went to my first pool, and uh, everything was fine. I went to my second one, and I fell in. So <laughs> <laughs> I went home. I lived close to the to where my pools were, and I changed my clothes, and I went back for lunch because a lot of times the guys would come back for lunch. <laughs> so we're all sitting around and talking and having lunch, and all of a sudden it got real quiet. And they all looked at me and they said, you fell into a pool, didn't you? <laughs> you I said, I have to admit it. I sure as hell did. <laughs> uh, that's but awesome. uh, yeah. I was initiated. Yep. Yeah. You, yep. you became a pool man that day. I always yeah, joke around with everybody. It's you like, graduated from pool boy to pool man. Yep. Absolutely. You, you're, you're really not a pool yeah. man until you fall in. So. Well, I don't uh, think Eric's ever fallen in. <laughs> I have never fallen in. I have never either. I, I was have, just going to say that. I yeah. I fall one leg in like my knee up to my knee. I've stepped in. I've stepped yeah. in on the side. Oh, hey, that counts. Step, but I've, that I've counts. never, I've Even never fallen in. I, uh, so, we're a rare breed. So I, I, I'm sure how many times that everybody can relate to this is brushing the wall and that pole slips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and your, your like arms that? are waving ah, back and forth. Yeah, yep. how, yeah how that cam you? gives in, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. It was, like going oh, yeah. In. It was funny. Yeah, Just a week you know? ago, I was on the phone with guys because during the day while we're servicing pools, I'm on the phone with like five, six, seven different pool owners. And, you know, when they have questions, they call in, they talk, they ask, oh, how do we do this or how do we fix this or whatever? And I'm always conversating. We're talking about business, talking about pools, life. And it was like a cartoon one day, and this was last week. And I don't know what happened or what I did, but I kind of almost kind of got like vertigo. I just, just something happened. And I was at the edge of the pool and I was literally doing this, <laughs> right, with my hands. And, and, and I, caught my, I caught my balance and I kept myself from falling in. But I mean, I almost nose dived into into the pool i i had a close mm. call i had one where i was talking to the lady she came out and it was all rock and i'm standing and i was brushing and she's talking to me and we're talking back and forth and that's the, the days where you had the little bluetooth on the, the the one little bluetooth and phone in the pocket and so all of a sudden she's talking to me and i step wrong on the rock and my my ankle just twisted so I started going towards the pool. So I grabbed the pole to put the pole at the bottom so that I could push myself up. Well, that was probably the stupidest thing I could have done. And I, I swear it was like slow motion. 
And I just turned to her and I just went, I'm going in and just, and it was the deep end. And I went <laughs> completely going, down. <laughs> She's laughing so hard. And one of my guys that was with me was laughing. And of course my phone's dead, you know, the Bluetooth headset's dead. I'm completely just like soaked. And luckily I had learned always have a little bag underneath the back seat. And so I was able to kind of get in the back seat and change and stuff like that. But I, I fallen in more than once. So. Anyway, well, join the club. I've done that too. I even fell right. off a retaining wall when it was raining one time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun, but at least it was my last pool. I was all the way out in Agura. So oh, I, I dried off the best I could. I put towels down on my seat in the truck and I drove home that way. Oh, Lord. Pissed off. Probably. Yeah, oh, I'm cranky. <laughs> yes. It wasn't Stan, one of my better days. Stan has always has a cleanest beautiful truck of anybody he, he's always absolutely meticulous on everything he does john he didn't get mad that he fell in he had got mad that he had to get wet inside his truck <laughs> right yeah <laughs> well remember we all got together at one of those pools that uh, bud was doing and we did that bucket, yeah, the bucket thing challenge where, yeah the bucket challenge yeah. and uh, that was a lot of fun where you go and you know everybody gets into the pool and they throw they throw water on you. You take a bucket and you pour it over your head. Right. That was, uh, I don't know, years ago, and that was people would challenge other people to do yeah. it, and then you donate yep. money, right? Yeah. So we did it as a whole big, both people from a Western show and an Ipsa chapter and other stuff, and we got into all got into a pool and with buckets and did it. Well, we were all, probably the biggest thing was for everybody to see Stan do it and get his <laughs> hair wet. Because his hair is always <laughs> so perfect, no one could believe that he was actually going to do this because his hair was, I mean, really actually, it was like, whoa. <laughs> when, when, I drove into the, when I drove into the parking lot that day, I rolled the window down and a couple of my friends were there and I said, look guys, I don't mind doing this, but I'm going to have to get my hair wet. <laughs> <laughs> And I tell you what, they almost drowned me. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys. I want to jump in. I want to start talking about the Western Pool Show. And I think I want to start and talk about the return of the show. The last show that you guys did, I think that was 20. And you guys were set, ready to go. You guys had everything set up when you guys were given a cease and desist letter that basically said, you know, that's it, the show's over, you have to close. And that was a big blow to you guys. I know it was a big blow to a lot of people because the Western is a nonprofit show. So can you talk about that experience and the impact that that had on the show? Just briefly, again, what happened to us in 20, we, well, certainly about January, I got the first inkling or heard that a show, an Asian show, had been closed, had been shut down in January. And it was an Asia Pacific business show in, at the Long Beach Convention Center. And that's when they shut down travel coming in from Asia. And I go, oh, you know, that's something interesting and whatever. And who knew what was going on? And then all the different things were coming around about COVID and all that stuff. And literally, I was almost every day and in multiple, multiple meetings and everything with the CDC, with the health departments, with everybody, at the convention center. And we were trying to implement all the protocols, everything that they, that they were asking. And certainly people were getting more and more nervous. And this was just literally the, the height of everything, the beginning. And it came down to the Thursday. We had our exhibitors on the floor we had 600 people already in classrooms, sitting downstairs in the classroom area. And the band, I literally had walked over. We'd usually do an exhibitor party. There's a bunch of hors d'oeuvres and like wine and cheese and whatever. And the guy comes and plays. And I, the, the guy was literally like just plugged in the amp, was starting to play. And they came and handed me that order, like cease and desist. And it was just like, just like that, you know, like cut it off. Whisk away the $12,000 worth of, you wine and cheese and whatever thing that party costs and you know never even got a taste of any of it and and sorry we're you know we're all shutting down spent the next day whatever people kind of mulled around and hung packing everything up and going because usually after our show closes at six that floor takes three days to put together and it, and it's done and clean that floor is clean and everybody's gone and by midnight so it was a really a slow teardown 
after that, then there's the aftermath. Then the convention center basically told us that we had occupied the building, that we had been there. So we didn't, we weren't getting refunded from the convention center. We weren't getting refunded. We had to, you have to prepay everything. So, so you're paying all your expenses, all your decorated, or all, I mean, all the, you know, the carpet and drapes and all that other stuff. It was all there and all done and paid for. And then literally there's people who had backed out. So we literally lost 42 years of what we little we had built up. We're a nonprofit. We don't budget to basically to make money. We give to charity, you know, and we do things every year. Went through struggles, tried doing legal action and stuff. None of that was to any avail. And so ultimately we just, we had to say to everybody that we we're unable to refund their money for that show. To say how much money it costs, it's a lot of money. It's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to put the show on. So we are great that there's a lot of companies, the major manufacturers are supporting us, that we've, we're certainly going to be down this year, but we're back. You know, we're, we're doing everything that we can. There's still some things going on, but, but we're trying to survive, trying to just get back. We did some virtual stuff in 21 and stuff, but people are happy to get back into each other. You saw there in Dallas how everybody enjoyed being back together. That was a big deal, people getting back together. So we're hoping that everybody will come out and support us again. Here's the big thing, and I can say this, and I know, John, this is probably what you were going to say because <laughs> I know you're passionate about it, but here's one of the things that people need to understand, and I can say this, and that is that a lot of these vendors and a lot of these companies, they need to realize that those are situations, A, that are going to happen, and those, are, those things are out of your control. And first of all, it's very expensive. John and I talked about it. When we did just our Pool Nation Awards, what was it, John? Three wireless mic a projector, and I don't know what, and it was almost $4,000. And we were just sitting there going, whoa, whoa, so wait no. a second. Well, oh, it was, a, the, it was the confidence monitor, three wireless mics, and a projector, and it was $4,000. So that just tells you how absolutely crazy the pricing on this stuff is. And you can't go with anybody else. You have to go with them, and period, and that's right. their pricing, and take it's it or leave it, and, and you're done. But here's my message to all the manufacturers, and I'm probably going to piss off a couple of them, all the manufacturers, all the salespeople and all that kind of stuff. What you guys need to realize is that this type of thing is going to happen. And it's not something that you can go back to the Western show and bitch at the Western show and complain about it. But here's the other thing that bothers me is they're going to have access to all these people. And we can't sit and turn our backs on these shows when these are the shows and the platforms that are out there to educate our industry and help our industry be better. So, you know, what I tell you guys now is buckle up, suck it up. It happened what it happened. Let's move forward. Let's support the Western show. I'm very passionate about the Western show because that's where I grew up. But, you know, it's done. It's over. Let's move on, people. And remember that at the end of the day, you as a manufacturer, as a product company, you need these shows in order to be able to thrive because you need to get those products to the people that are going to be putting them together. So anyways, my little rant, John, sorry. No, no, I'm glad you're actually, you're doing one. That's usually me that's yapping, right? And going off the deep end. So that was I'm happy very, that very you're well doing said. it. It was, it was and it's true. You know, this is, it's not, you know, sometimes people feel entitled and they think everything's yes. a right yep. and not a privilege. And it is definitely a privilege to have, especially the work that you guys do. And it kind of segues into what I'm going to say. And before I kind of get into my question, I just want to thank you guys for what you've done for the industry. I think personally that the Western show plays a vital role in furthering education for all of us. Plus, oh, I may be a little bit biased, but your focus on the service side of things helps elevate our side of the profession. And to top it all off, the whole show's nonprofit, like you talked about, and ran 100% by volunteers, which speaks volumes in itself. Putting a show like that on that size is no small feat. And like Edgar was saying, we had just a little taste of it, and we know how difficult that is. So, you know, my hat's off to you gentlemen and everybody that's involved. I know you guys put in a lot of work and effort into it. And we thank you because it is the show that I look forward to every single year. And I was heartbroken that I couldn't be there. Not in no way upset at the show because it was out of your guys' control. And I'm yeah, just... Those things I, happen. I, 
It does. Shit happens, yeah. right? And what are we going to do I about it? I appreciate that. That's, that's well, great. We yeah, that is, John. Thank you. Yeah, that really is. Yeah, yeah that, that means absolutely. a lot to us. <laughs> it does. It does. And I can tell you truthfully, the guys and girls that I speak to, they feel the same way. And they are so excited. We have people flying in from Florida coming down the, the Western show because we've talked it up here in us California guys saying how great it is and how we look forward to it. And you know, we're going to be there and we want them to be a part of it and to experience it. And just talking about the education portion of it, which is just golden. It really is. It's just beautiful. It seems like every other show always does like, or it just seems like they always do the education in the middle of the show, or they kind of gets mixed up or does this and does that, where you guys always do the education. And then after that, you got the show, you put emphasis on that. And I think that's very important. And again, speaks to what your purpose and what you're trying to do there. Can you talk about, and you did a little bit already, but maybe we can get a little bit more into the specifics and what it takes to put on that show and the roles of all the volunteers you have and what they need to do to help make it happen for everybody. Well, I tell you, with the volunteers, we start out on on Wednesday. I have like eight to 10 volunteers come because we need to set up the show early on Thursday morning. The bulk of the volunteers come in Thursday afternoon between 11 and 12. So we have to be set up. We have to have our signs up. We have to be ready for the guys who do the water fills. I have a short meeting. We have to have lunch in between that. And then one o'clock on Thursday, we start the seminars. So it's important that we have everything set up and that we're ready to go. As far as what we do down there with setting up the classes, I have a a magnet board that I set up. I have small magnets with everybody's name on it that actually does the seminars in the classrooms. And as we pick names, those people will go up and they'll pick the seminar that they want. They put their magnet on there. We go through the whole day on Thursday. This way, I know where everybody's at that's doing seminars. Our bigger classrooms, we have five of them. I have two people in those particular classes. We have scanners, and I have one person that goes upstairs, and they program that for us for each individual time slot. So they bring them down. I have four girls that work the desk. They set everything up from one class all the way down to the the ninth class. We give away a, a, a speaker gift every year. I try to find something that will be of value to uh, everyone, you know, not just just guys but for women and something that they could actually take on a plane. One year I found a real nice uh, wine kit and a lot of people weren't able to take it on the plane because it had a little knife and a corkscrew in it. And so that was kind of a bummer. But uh, anyway, they set that up and then they also have a package of evaluations that each classroom gets. They pass those out to all of the attendees. They put their uh, thoughts on whether they liked it, whether they didn't like it. And those are all collected by the volunteers when the class is over. Those are all brought back to the table where the girls work. They go through them all. They reevaluate them. I also have an envelope with a uh, sticker for the speaker to put their address and name so that at the end of the show, when I get home, I go over all of these. And then I send all the evaluations to each speaker so that they can see what they did, what they didn't do, and you know, so on and so forth. I know they appreciate it because uh, they like to know what the feedback is, you know, for their individual seminars. That's awesome. Hey, Stan, uh, John's going to be doing two classes, so make sure I get one of those forms so I could kind of give John a bad I'm review. Gonna, no, 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 no. See, I was going to interrupt you when you said that we, we are teaching four classes. Well, no, I'm, no, no. I'm, I got. I tell you guys, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fill you guys. As, oh, <laughs> I'm no. gonna fill yours out. <laughs> no, every, everybody gets one, and yeah. uh, you know most people fill them out. We, every once in a while, we get a few people that don't. As far as the scanners go, about 20 minutes into the class, you know, because we wait to see if there's any people that are coming in late. Then the scanners go back upstairs. They're reprogrammed for the next time slot. They come back down, and then the girls get set up for the next wave of uh, of seminars. 
we scan everybody in every class so that when you register, you actually have a program that you can go back on in your dashboard and download all the classes that you took. That gives you access to that. And there's a lot of people who get insurance breaks if they say that they've taken so much continuing education. So that's so we cool. set that program up and you don't see in a lot of other shows that we do that for people. And, uh, and you see Stan's ex- explanation, how meticulous he is about every little thing. Yeah, that, no, that I love him. it. I love I mean, it. That That is him about how he does that. And, and what's wonderful about Stan, it's not just, it's always a little meticulous thing, but he, he has such a great relationship with all the volunteers. It, it's the big picture thing of him finding people, finding, talking to people, weeding them out, who's good and who's bad and who's actually going to work. Because we treat our volunteers really well and they come and they have a great time, but we expect them to work too. That's the great thing that Stan does. He really has a knack for dealing with the people and working with them and making sure that that we have the right people. And and I think in total, we end up close to 40 plus to 50, including our board, some some over 50 people just at the show. And think about that, John. We can't even, I, like, I can't even find somebody to work for money, <laughs> and you guys are able to get people to volunteer and work for free. Well, well listen, listen to this. I lost nine of my good people because they didn't believe in the vaccine or getting a test or wearing a mask, and I was able to replace all of them. That's awesome. And think about it, John. We've learned how hard it is to put these shows together this year, right? It's, it was really our first eye-opener. These guys are doing it 100% volunteers. That's just absolutely mind blowing. It is mind blowing. And then what our little small, we did times 10,000. Yeah. Right. Amplified by 10,000 because our little problems, you know, are yeah. our big, huge problems. Yeah. Are nothing. It is extremely professional from the minute you get there. Yep. It's so organized and it's ready to rock and roll. And I come from a corporate world. And we've done a lot of traveling and we did a lot of conventions and we did a lot of get togethers, retreats and business summits. And I was with a fortune 500 company, $40 billion a year company. And that was 20 years ago. And the conventions, it just felt like that. Everything was professional. Like you said, you got the scanners, everybody had the roads, everybody knew what they were doing. Everything looked perfect to the T and at that moment, back then, I had no idea that it was a nonprofit and that it was ran all by volunteers. And when I learned that, I was like, wow. We're, you, wow. we're, you, we're just all a bunch of pool guys. It's <laughs> badass. It really, it really is. It, it's yeah. badass. It, yeah. it, it's yeah. awesome. It, we, it really yeah, might be. We, we take it seriously. In fact, we actually learn and go into the trade show industry. We, we go to trade show that taking classes for ourselves to learn how to do things and how to better ourselves and this stuff. So we take pride in that and in, in what we do. And we, we we always are trying to educate ourselves and you got to do that. So literally we're, if you say the second, third largest show in the country, it's a national show. It's not just a, a regional, you know, some little regional show. We have average people from 35 to 40 States and seven, eight, foreign countries for the last five years. I mean, it's, we get people from, again, from all over the world that come to our show and all over the country. We think of ourselves as a national show, not a regional show. Guys, let's do this. Let's take a quick word from our sponsors. When we come back, Eric, I want to jump in and have you give us a little bit more background on the Western Pool and Spa Show. We'll be right back, guys. The SPPA is dedicated to the niche general liability insurance needs of pool and spa professionals. As industry leaders, we'll fight for you, protect you, and be there for you. We provide extraordinary service before and after the membership and insurance is in effect. Insured members of the program get the best customer support and have peace of mind that their alliance is their voice and always fighting for their program and insurance needs. We proudly insure thousands of pool and spa professionals across the United States. With over 30 years encompassing the pool and spa industry, we know the needs of pool and spa professionals. Through the SPPA program, there are three tailored and customized general liability insurance options to pick from. For more information on our programs and insurance options, visit our site at www.bsppa.com. The sound of you continually pitching pool care poles into the trash. The sound of you using an Ultimate Pool Tools carbon fiber pool care pole for years to come. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at ultimatepooltools. 
Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We are talking to Stan. We're talking to Eric from the Western Pool and Spa Show. That's going to be happening on March 10th, 11th, and 12th. And let's continue our conversation. Eric, can you give us a little background on the Western Pool Show? Well, this will be our 44th year. So it started off, there's a few pool guys, mostly part of one Ips Ipsa chapter, and there was a group of manufacturers that were sitting around one day, and they decided, hey, you know, maybe we should put together something for education, and bandied back and forth, and they ended up putting on a little tabletop with a few tables that everybody's been to, the little tabletop, and they added some few educational classes, and it went well. It was in uh, there in Studio City, California. And that went on for a few years. It got a little bit bigger and bigger and ended up moving to Pasadena Convention Center and there for a couple of years. And then the last going on 30 years, we've been in Long Beach, which has become our home. So again, this would be the 44th year. Been around a long time and it started out and continues to be our main focus. The real reason why we do it is education. We exist, and that's right there at the beginning of our bylaws that says that we exist for the, the purpose of educating the pool industry. And so the show itself, the show floor, exists to provide us that opportunity to put on classes. And we put on three days of classes for literally, right now, an unheard price of what is 85 bucks. I mean, you go to other conventions and you're spending a couple hundred dollars sometimes for just one class. So it's $85 now through March 1st, and it bumps up to a whopping $95, you know? So there's no better deal that's out there for literally opportunity. We have 90 classes that you have an opportunity to go to. But it takes a lot to put it on. I mean, there's so many, so many just different parts to uh, things of putting on the whole show. I was talking to a uh, female pool girl yesterday, Stevie from Upland, and so I, I was saying, hey, we're going to be down at the show. And she's like, oh, my God, where's the show? And so I said, oh, it's in Long Beach. And I was kind of giving her all the information. And she's like, I'm going to come down. And so as I'm talking to her, she's looking on her computer, the Western Show website, and she sees the classes and she sees all that. And that's when it had kind of clicked on me, John, because she's like, oh, I'm going to come down and see you guys. And I'm like, well, if you don't come for for the classes, which are during the day, because obviously we're, I was talking to her yesterday, so I'm thinking she probably can't shuffle her stuff that quick to take the classes. And she's like looking at it and she's like, oh, I just registered on the website to be able to go see the floor and blah, blah. And she's like, now I have to register. So is that $85 per class? How does that work? No. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's just one flat fee and you take all the class. And it, it was funny, John, because it didn't click until I said that, that I'm like, wait a second. All the other shows are ch are charging, right? These guys are getting for 85 bucks. They're taking all the classes that they can take. It's just one flat price. You pay, you take go take all the classes. And so you start looking at the Western show and it's got its own little magic and it's all starting to come together in this podcast. It's the volunteers. It's the passion from the pool pros. It's that price point. It, it just all starts to come together. 
We appreciate that. And they're always asking, too, the show floor is free. Hey, if you can't take classes or don't have time for it, come and uh, we ask you to register early. I think we charge you a couple of bucks if you don't, simply for the badge fee. And that's only an incentive to pre-register because it, it helps us out. It helps us out. We have to have fewer people in registration if we can move people through in registration. We, we love for people to register early, but it's the single best opportunity for education that's out there. And this year we have education and stuff on the floor as well. And literally you walk away with tons of stuff. I mean, there's no end of not only our giveaway, every hour there's you know multiple prizes giving away. And then we have our grand prize stuff that goes on. For years, we've given away a truck. Well, of course, the world is different. And everybody understands what prices of trucks and stuff are. And let alone, we had a deal with Dodge dealer for years where we would sort of get a little discount on a truck and then they would exhibit at the show and then and i always call it entertainment like every guy wants to crawl over and under a truck and every guy of drives course truck, right you know so <laughs> like what do guys like you know like car and trucks and stuff so it's great there's a perfect symbiotic relationship between the two and and we would give away the truck every year but they didn't think that they would even have a vehicles that they could show let alone that we could give away so that ended up not happening this year. Hopefully, in the future it will. But we are giving twenty thousand dollars away. And remember, winners take me, John, and Stan to Vegas for the weekend with that twenty grand. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Stan's going guy. with us, John. <laughs> I tell you what, yes. I'll take extra care of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Guys, now let's talk a little bit about your classes for the Pool Pro because you guys do a lot of different stuff. You do chemistry, you do business classes, you do some of the electrical classes. Can you talk a little bit about some of the classes that are offered at the show? Absolutely. We have 20 Spanish classes, but they do actually relate to other classes that we take that are in English. We give classes not only for the servicemen, but also for contractors. We have plaster classes, setups of equipment and uh, sizing of plumbing. We have uh, variable speed up classes. We've got salt systems, troubleshooting. We have different cleaners, and we also do uh, several different heaters, hydraulics, electrical, also uh, grounding with electrical, and just about everything you could think of that would be a benefit to uh, the guys in the industry. And I work very hard every year to make different uh, classes that will be a, a benefit to everybody. And, you know, naturally you'd have to do some basic ones all the time, but I do my best to get new ones. Actually, the year that we uh, had to shut down, I had 50 new seminars out of the 90. And I thought it was going to be record uh, years as far as attendance, but unfortunately it didn't happen. You touched on the Spanish classes, and I've noticed that, and, and I've seen how they've grown, and I think that's a beautiful thing, right, to be able to reach out to, you know, some of the pool professionals that are out there that, not that necessarily that they, they can't speak English, or if they, if they don't speak English, but more importantly, that maybe English isn't their first language, and they learn better um, listening, like Edgar, right? You would think <laughs> Edgar, Edgar's first language is not English, him being Puerto Rican, and we tease them all the time and we play games. But the truth is, understanding or being taught in a native in your native language, you tend to retain that information better. It's easier to learn from it and you don't mix things up, especially when you're talking about things as important as health and safety and chemistry. That type of stuff is real important. And I think those workers and business owners that fall in that category get to experience you know some of the things that we've had and gotten to learn from so I, I think that's that's just awesome that ever expanding i think the beauty of it is I, I haven't seen as much of it at other shows so just the fact that you guys see that and are putting things into play on that i mean that to me is huge stan when it comes to to you guys doing that my hat's off to you Spanish is my second language, <laughs> whatever. My, my, <laughs> wife's Peru, my wife's Peruvian. You know, it's always in our households and stuff, and, and we try to teach our kids in Spanish and stuff. And so, but I'll tell you, and I've seen this for years, some of the best pool guys that are out there are Hispanic, that are Spanish-speaking pool guys that are out there. Not just 
guys cleaning pools or whatever, but literally some of the sharpest, best business owners, best running their best businesses, doing stuff are coming from that community. It, it really is a tremendous asset to our industry. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're reaching out to them too, that that's and under and recognizing that that's the case. Now, Stan, let me ask you about a class that you have on there. And that is you guys have an attorney coming in to talk about the, I think it's AB5. Is that right? The AB5, um, yeah. The AB5. And I think that's a huge topic, especially for California. Can you talk a little bit about that class? Yeah, it's how to comply with the independent contractors, the laws that they have to give to their people, you know, if they have a multitude of employees. And it's all of a money thing, and they have to be able to pay workman's comp and different types of taxes. And so the I actually went to one of the seminars, and he just took one employee, and it was mind-boggling how much money that the pool owner has to spend. I mean, it's anywhere from 25 to 35% more that you have to consider when you're doing your business. So that really uh, affects guys uh, tremendously. Uh, a lot of guys that I talk to are willing to say, you know what, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it and hopefully I won't get caught. But I had a friend that was caught. Not only did he lose his business, he had to pay over $50,000 and back taxes. This is something that guys really need to take seriously. And I was fortunate enough to get this uh, gentleman to come and uh, and give this seminar for us. I'm real excited about it, and I sure hope that we get a good turnout. Yeah, I think that's a hot topic, huh, John? Oh, absolutely, absolutely yeah. a hot topic. And it's there's blurred lines, and it's still not. Even though we've talked about it, it seems like. What happened is it was a really hot topic right before COVID. Right. Oh, and then yeah. COVID happened and we every, were beating and everybody's head and COVID happened. And then I think everybody lost sight of it and they're kind of just doing what they're doing and see no evil, hear no evil type, type, you know, that's, that's the mentality they have. So bringing it to the forefront again and saying, Hey, this is important because the government doesn't mess around. Oh no. This is your livelihood and you can't just pretend that you didn't know or throw your head in the sand like an ostrich and just say, oh, I don't see anything. It's okay. It's not going to happen to me. Bullshit. It will. And like Stan, <laughs> you just said, you have an example of what happened to somebody. It's devastating, especially to people that aren't big, huge corporations or somebody who is a one polar or has one truck or two trucks. It's, it could be devastating for you and your business and everything that you've worked so hard to build. It's important to, to get with the times and to know what you need to do and to navigate through this. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I do have mm -hmm. uh, I do have one title here that was that I really was interested in. And this young lady, her name is uh, Deborah Morgan, and she's a, a CPA. And her title is I've got a business. Now what? Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. So, so I I definitely would like to attend that one. <laughs> Beautiful. And that's our big thing, Stan. We push, you know, really kind of getting that pool guy right as, a, as he's beginning and giving him the right tools from the beginning to be able to really be successful. And to me, I sit there, John, and I look and it's like, you know, I want all pool pros out there to be able to go, hey, there's a show in Vegas and we're from Florida and we do so well that we could just take the week off and go up there and fly up there and go to the convention and do that. You know, those are the success stories that you want to hear from people making money because like Eric was saying, you know, you could really make good money. You could do really well in the pool industry, but it takes a lot too. It, uh, you absolutely. have to learn a lot of the business side and, and be very structured for it to work that way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, look, I've always said it. You get in what you put in on this, and it works with everything, but the entry fee to get into it is really, really, really minute and small. Anybody can become a pool man at the start. Where you take it and what you become is completely up to you, and that's why I, I was so fascinated with it, and I saw it, and I'm like, wow, you you know, this is this is a real thing, and you can have a very good life if you choose to do things the right way 
So it's pretty mind boggling what can become of, you can either be just barely making by and doing kind of doing your gig, your thing. You can turn into a, build this huge company, service thousands of pools and make buku cash. You can be retired and just do pools for fun and just for a little bit of spending money. You know, you can be doing, it's just, just so many facets to this industry. It's, it's just unbelievable. There's all kinds of niches too. Like yeah. look at the, look at Eric's niche. Like he found that right. one niche and it's like, boom, that's, that's where I stick to, you know, that's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And there's plenty of pools out there. We haven't really talked about the expo portion of the show yet. So can you tell us a little bit about the expo experience and how many vendors will be attending? You want well, to do that, Eric? You, yeah, we're a little bit certainly going to be down. We usually average around 200 and something exhibitors, but we're probably going to be down 25, 30%. That's just the realities of COVID. And then people who, ah, we have a few people who are upset about what happened last time and still blame us. They are upset at us. And I felt bad about, you know, it's horrible for the little guy who comes across the country and to show, and, but we're all in that same boat and it's terrible. But our show floor, and that's something else I'm really proud of, is, you, you know, we try to do our best. If you, you come in, you see how we do our registration areas, how we just going down the pool school. We have all, all kinds of, you know, big, big sort of displays and, and everything that, that we try to make it as professional looking as possible. And on the show floor, of course, all the all the big exhibitors, the Pinters and Hayward. Hayward has a new booth. It looks really good. I was disappointed. I think uh, Fluidra, and you saw that that big huge screen that Fluidra bought at the that were in Dallas. I don't think that they're going to be able to bring it. There's a the show from in Orlando is right before our show. The week this it's actually the week next before. weekend. Next weekend, yeah. and so all those companies and this and other logistics things that I have to deal with is helping them get all their stuff all the way from Florida to California in a couple of days before they have to set up again. So I don't think that screen's going to make it over, but the the show floor itself is really cool. And then we have this year we have education on the floor. We have some seminars and some other things that we are trying to gear towards more on the contractor side, on, on the builder side. We've always been known as a service show, and certainly that. But it doesn't mean that we can't also have opportunities and things for, for the yep. builders. A lot of things yes. that we've done too is we've had classes. We do classes to say. Literally, it was how to transition from service to construction. A lot of guys do that. I myself, you know, and, you know, you start a service company, and all of a sudden you do a little remodeling and whatever, and now you're, you know, now you're a builder. So we're trying to focus. We're doing things with Watershape University, and they have some great classes. We're doing a few classes on the outside. They're doing one on an actual plumbing. It's a really an interesting class, and it's a great class, and it has a component that's online to begin with. And they're doing this at, at our host hotel, the Renaissance Hotel. But it's a whole day of actually how to plumb, literally putting pieces of pipe together. You know, how to actually, the proper way of doing plumbing. And which a lot of people, they don't, they don't teach. You know? beautiful. And, and there's the right ways and wrong ways to do things. So that's a great class that, that they're offering. And then they're doing some stuff there again on the show floor and in our regular seminar packages. Of course, we're doing the, the chemistry class, the, the PCTI class, the Bob Lowry, which you guys had were great about having him on your show every month. And he was a dear friend of mine. And of course, that was horrible and sad that we lost him just last fall. And uh, and I think we're doing his wife is coming to the show and we're doing a little special thing for her. And that's that's pretty cool. And we're still remembering Bob Lowry. He was an integral part of our show for education for ever, you know, close to 30 years. Very nice, so man. It, it'd be nice to be able to recognize again his contribution and and express to his wife that feeling that we had for him. Yeah, we we definitely miss Bob big time, and John doesn't know this yet, but John, there's obviously going to be a, a, an event for Bob. But you're going on stage with me, my friend. So just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> John, John's all Boy. really last minute again. Come yeah. on, dude. Boy, what a what yeah. a friend. <laughs> right. No, for Bob, for no problem. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah no for, problem. I think we're having a some podcast or something is doing some big event to it on our show floor, some kind of award ceremony or something like that. But I, I, I heard they're nobodies. Who, yeah, okay. I heard they're nobodies. <laughs> Anyway, so we're we looking are. forward. We're looking we're, forward to that happening too. So we, so we got to build that up. That the builders awards. So yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a, that's a cool thing. It's going to be a neat thing that we're never had before, and that's going to be something we hope that could go on in the future. And that that'll be great. We're looking forward to having that. 
Absolutely. So we're, we're excited. You know, we, you guys partnered with us and so did Hayward and we're bringing the first top 25 pool builders of the year. And um, we're going to announce those. We're going to have Monica, which won a sales rep of the year at the Pool Nation Awards. We're going to have Vic, which won pool builder of the year. Come and join us to do a little live event to do the top 25. And we hope to definitely grow that to the next level next year. Huh, John? Yeah, for sure. Because John, right. John is all, John, we, you know, we said, oh, you know, we're going to do the top 25, but, you know, it's a little bit short notice. So we're going to do this. And John was mad at me. He's like, we, I want to go big. I want something huge, right. Edgar. And I'm like, John, <laughs> slow it down. Like, so easy, is, yeah, one step at a this time. Is a little taste, a little taste <laughs> this year. And then we're, I think we're going to go big, right? We're yeah, that's great. Big. Yep. Abs- good. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Go, go big or go home, right? That, that's, that's right. That's it. All in or all out. Yep. That's exactly that's, how I am, right? It's my, like it's one of my mottos. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. That's exactly how I am. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Yep. So I want to ask the last question here. Well, actually, you know what? Let me ask something different. So you talked about Hayward and Fluidra, but what other manufacturer, what other come bigger companies are you going to be oh, having? Pantera. Pantera has uh-huh. been an integral part of our show forever. Big sponsor. We really appreciate them. And people are stepping up. Raypack, literally, there was a few years ago, they had a little 10 by 10 booth. They're bringing in, a, they're doing, they're being a big 20 by 50 booth with two, va- they're, their Ray vehicles back? and stuff, Ray Pack. Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. putting them right at the front of the sh- front of the floor, and they're, That's they're awesome. stepping up, and they're bringing in their uh, sprinter van things that they've set up for it that they can travel around and do education and stuff. And so that's awesome. It's it's wonderful that they're doing that. I mean, there's just, there's a ton of others. Uh, PEP, which that's an interesting thing. The dynamic that's going on in the industry that everybody's buying everybody. So within the span of a few short months, it went from PEP. Still PEP, but PEP, so the heritage. Florida water to yeah. heritage. Yeah. So my my issue the last, actually the last few days has been scrambling logos, literally like getting logos for your first signage and everything. Like, what do you want to be called? Is it this or is it this? Or <laughs> right. Or are you still going to be called this <laughs> by the time Three weeks start, from now. Right? <laughs> the time the show is gone. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You're you're right, exactly. So it's, it's maybe we'll buy them out, John. Um, literally, whole nation suppliers. <laughs> literally, it was. It's you know, what are you going to be called? And 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 then it's and how much it costs? Tons of money to reprint big signs and re- oh, redo yeah. stuff. And so, of course, they they want to have their new logo and everything on it, and then getting it from them and it just it's just all the logistics are just literally are just. People would have no idea all the little details, literally thousands of things that have to go into putting on the show. It's crazy how you do a lot of it because we were talking after the Dallas show and we were talking about the floor plan and uh, and all that. And we kind of talked with some of the other shows because they have people that do that in departments and we kind of broke it all down. And John, Eric is all, oh, no, I have to go home and I got to do the layout on the program and separate all the things. And, and I'm like, that's what happens when, you know, you have those volunteers. But these guys are these guys are hustling and putting the show together. So my hat's off to you guys because it's just such a big event. And here's the thing for it to come off as good as it is. It's just huge. I'm sure it's a freaking thankless job. You know, and, <laughs> you think so, Eric? <laughs> it is. And that's why we're saying, look, we're not fawning, and, and, but it's just, we get it. It's a tr- and, and I know it takes a certain type of person to be able to do something like that, especially, and it's not, you know, money isn't involved in it, right? Where everybody's trying to figure things out and everybody has an angle at something and you're literally doing it because you're trying to better the industry and you're doing it for us. So that's why we're saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure you don't get enough. Thank yous. And like you said, I- I've heard it because when it first happened, or I'm sure it was a lot of pissed off people and it's okay. I get being upset and pissed off, but what's important is focusing and, and directing that anger. Who's it towards? And I think sometimes some of that anger was misplaced and went against the people that were literally there trying to help and trying to make it happen. And were, and were devastated the most, which was you, you guys, the team. But we felt uh, worse the Western than show. We were yeah. worse than anybody. Literally, I didn't sleep for three months before that show. And it's kind of like cut and paste. You know, you're, you're doing the same thing over and over again. But this year... It's literally like putting on it something brand new because yeah. all the companies are people are everybody and every, all the companies are different. People we're dealing with the vendors are I mean the, the contractors we're dealing with are different. People at the convention center are all new. 
You know, it's oh, just, yeah. it's a, it's a whole probably all the red tape and that you have to go the, through oh, to the, get it done. Oh, it's changed the meetings. I was there yesterday at the convention center. There's new things. There's new everything, and, it, and it's changing all the time. So that oh. kind of goes into the last question. I was saying, I know we're living in the COVID nineteen times. Can you tell us if there are any restrictions at the convention? or anything any visitor or attendee should know about prior to going there? We've been under sort of the guidelines that everybody coming to the show will have to show some sort of like a vaccine card and or a negative test in order to to get into the show. Once you get in the door, go up, get your badge and registration, then you're good for the rest of the show. I mean, so for the rest of the day, as long as you show your badge, you don't have to show that for the next three days if if you come say on Thursday. Right now, there still is, unfortunately, a mask requirement that they're saying. And we just got some new guidelines today. We're trying to see just how that's going to fit in, saying that people who are vaccinated, that your masks are optional or that you're recommended, but but optional. But then they're saying that people that don't have vaccine, they should wear a mask. And then, but if you're eating, you know, whatever, eating or drinking actively, if if you notice the Super Bowl, there were, it must. I mean, everybody was eating and drinking, I, and that's right here in LA County. You know, yeah. Nobody was wearing masks. I no, I no. Don't think so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, those are the guidelines and stuff that we're on right now. We are going to have to have somebody. I mean, we have some security, some people that are just going to briefly look at if there's a picture of your vaccine card or a picture of whatever something test. We are going to have on site. There will be a place where you can get tested right there. There's a Fee, small fee for it that, that they charge. It doesn't go to us. We're not doing it. We have to put out stuff to have them there so that you can get in. And it may change, you know, right before the show. We don't know. And then they're probably going to lift all restrictions the day after our show. You know, or that, right before. Just, yeah, hopefully yeah, right that, before. That, 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 yeah, but that's just, we have to comply with what they tell us to do. And we want everybody safe and everything, you know. And we respect everybody's decisions and their own health and stuff. But we really would love everybody to be there. That's our biggest thing. We want people to come back and people get that enjoyment of being back together and that face-to-face opportunity to talk to each other and hopefully see everybody's face and enjoy each other's company. It's really interesting. It's not just the pool guys and whatever, but literally all the sales rep, all the people within from companies to companies, they're all friends. They're competitors, but every best was something you you learn when you're dealing with all kinds of different vendors is they all know each other and they're all friends with each other and they they love going to shows and being able to hang out and see their friends as well. So we're lucky in that, that that our industry is like that. And here's my thing. It is what it is. And so like to me and John, we're like, it is what it is. If we have to wear a mask and that's what it is, we're going to be there. We're going to support. We're going to be there to show that this is exactly what we need to do. We need to get out there. We need to promote and we need to kind of get back to our normal so guys show up guys and girls show up get out there support the western show so that the western show can continue to be here because it's a huge resource to all of us the pool pros out there guys let's do this let's take our final word from our sponsors when we come back john i want to get your final thoughts the hyper pull from ultimate pool tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction go to ultimatepooltools.com or instagram at ultimate pool tools pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance the sppa program has you covered With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pull Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. 
You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Well, welcome back, everybody. We continue our conversation with Eric. We continue our conversation with Stan. And Stan did say that he's going to go to Vegas with us, people. So keep an eye out. We're going to be winning those twenty thousand dollars, and we're going to Vegas. So we might all John, end up in jail. <laughs> I don't know that. We'll all end up in jail. I love it, John. I have been to, with, to Vegas with Stan on multiple occasions, and, I, and I, yeah, I, we, we we better talk about that a little bit. Are, are we? Are we? <laughs> what was the name of that show, John? Uh, the where they all went to vegas and they ended hung up over hung over, over. <laughs> yeah you guys may not come back <laughs> that is awesome now i'm really looking forward to it john <laughs> so john let me get your final thoughts i thoroughly enjoyed this podcast thank you so much for taking the time to jump on and to talk to us it's seriously an honor like i said growing up in the pool industry and learning the western show was my first real show that i went to and i was like a kid in the candy shop when i was there slightly intimidated but very excited of just everything and to have the opportunity to talk to you two and to learn about all the wonderful people that make it happen is a blessing on my side and us to be able to have a small piece a small part of that is something that we're very honored to be a part of. And we really appreciate the opportunity that you guys are giving us so that we can be there and, um, you know, give a small piece of what we have to offer and be a part of the beautiful Western show because it really is. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know Edgar, Zach feel the same exact way. You guys have, you guys, are you sure you haven't done a lot of podcasts because you guys are doing really, right? really they're, well. They're, they're really because, normal on it. They're just like, because <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. So well, I, I hope, I hope that it's we, you can, guys making it that comfort. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. thank you. I hope yeah. that we can, we can have the, the pleasure of having you guys back on again. And maybe we can do a recap after the show and then kind of talk about some of the things that, you know, our experiences and what we saw and what feedback we got. And I think that might be a great topic. So again, yep. thank you from the bottom of my heart. Appreciate you taking the time late in the evening to do this with us. I look forward to seeing you guys in a couple of weeks. Great. Awesome. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Um, so Zach is not here, so I'll give my final thoughts, guys. To everybody listening out there, this truly is a magical show. And now it makes sense to me why it is it's all these volunteers coming together year after year after year to put this show together they're not earning a dime out of their time that they're spending in this show so that can tell you that they have a passion for the show eric how long have you been doing this show too long not too long <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's all right <laughs> yeah yeah 20, how many years have you been long time going almost as long as we've been in long beach yeah so long, long time but uh yeah and i just again we we have other people have been on the show for a lot longer and we have a great guys other board members again who have put in so many it's not just us it's not us literally right. it started from the beginning i have to thank all those people going back to the very beginning who worked and did this again, it's literally only been two years. We have a bookkeeper. That was our first, it, before it was all volunteers. We did all the bookkeeping the first time now, two years where we have a paid book, bookkeeper. It's always been volunteers and all the board members are putting years and years every year after year. And you see them every year at the show. 
um, our guy who plays little algae, you know, we've had four or five different ones and, and that's always a big part. And they've dedicated years to this. So it's not just Stan and I, but there's other people that are part of it. And I appreciate them. And again, all those years and all the companies who have supported us over the years. It truly is a magical show, John. And now I know why these guys are putting their hearts into it. The education part of it, the focus that they put on it, the efforts that go into it. So everybody that's out there, pack up your bags, come meet us at the show. We're going to be there. You're going to be able to hang out with us. And it's really a great show. I really recommend for everybody to get out there. So Stan, Eric, I want to thank you for your time. I know it's really late your time. You guys are super busy, especially close to the show. We can't wait to get out there. We got more work to do tonight. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're two or three now, hours. Now we can go to work. <laughs> now we got to go to work. Yeah, I got two or three more hours worth of work to do. Yeah, no but, problem. Uh, but don't worry, guys. When uh, when you come uh, to the show, we'll hook up and uh, we'll talk about Vegas. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, and I'm looking forward to maybe I can sneak in in this cheese and wine little section. <laughs> At the beginning yeah. of the show. Yeah. Huh? Unfortunately, we're not doing that one this year. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's knock this one out the park so that next year. So that we next can year have we can it. have to be a part of it. We will right. when we everything is back together. We do it up good. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm looking forward to it, guys. I'm looking forward to working with you guys and to working into the future with you guys, helping you with the show. Again, John and I are very passionate about it. That's been our show. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Everybody listening, we will catch you next week. Hope you guys have a great evening. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to the Pool Nation podcast, a member of the Pool Nation family. You can listen to us live every Friday here at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You can find us at Pool Nation or PoolNationPodcast.com, on Facebook, or on Instagram at Pool.Nation. And to find more info about Pool Invoice, the billing software built specifically for the pool industry, go to PoolInvoice.com. Before you go, this is what the pool industry has been waiting for. PoolManUniversity.com. It's the first platform dedicated to learning the swimming pool service and repair industry. A pool service community where you can connect and find videos on business, service, water chemistry, and repairs. See you there at PoolManUniversity.com.